Just give it a minute or two for people to join. Anna, should we start in a uh, five past, three more minutes? And yeah, happy for you to start now if you want, Dara. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and also, I think this is being recorded. If anyone missed it, it'll be replayed and available online as usual. So, Good morning and good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are joining us from. Um, we are joined today by a panel of experts from CloudReach, AWS, and special guest Chris Gabriel to talk talent, uh, particularly the talent crisis uh, we're experiencing right now. In a recent survey that uh, we conducted uh, more than 70% of respondents reported that cloud skills gaps in their organization <clears throat> was a big problem for them. Um, and to frame this discussion today with our panel, um, I just wanted to talk through where the talent crisis may have come from. So if we look at history uh, and post World War II, we had IBM and Xerox dominating the enterprise computing space. Um, and then we fast forward really quickly, we then have Microsoft and Apple disrupting that, that world really, really quick. Um, and that speed of dis disruption was amplified by AWS with the release of public cloud, and virtual machines and storage in about 2006 and 2008. Then um, the release of that those the, then the innovation that ha happens within AWS was thousand times more than that was that was happening previously. Then people aren't getting trained quick or experienced quickly enough um, on on those that public cloud platform. So the delay is then created in the AWS releasing new technology quicker than it can be consumed by the talent um, that's available. So what I want to do today is that was my framing of what the talent crisis was. But what I want to do is open it up to the panel for discussion on what they think the talent crisis is. So who wants to go first? Happy to go first if you want, Darren. Hi, yeah, everyone. Yeah, Nicole Squire. So I work in AWS Training and Certification, uh, Partner Enablement Manager. So I work with our key consulting partners to uh, identify talent in the market and then help upskill uh, resources as well with training programs. And I think, as you said, Darren, um, with cloud computing coming in, um, and we've identified this, the, this current skills gap since about 2016. So coming on for about six years now, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. 
um, from a report that, um, that we commissioned as well. There's a, a, a cloud professional services um, expected growth in the market of 37 billion by 2026, and that's growing at a compound rate of 17% as well. So we can really see that the demand for cloud skills is outstripping the supply uh, that's available in terms of the skills in the market. Um, so really looking at programs to support that. Um, so what I'll be talking a little bit today about as well is a programme called um, 29 million, uh, which is a commitment that AWS has made uh, to train up 29 million people by 2026 as well. I'll talk to you a bit about some programmes that we're doing uh, there later on. Awesome. Thanks for your introduction. And sorry, I didn't let everyone introduce themselves. Um, Poonam, can we go to you and you sort of introduce yourself and then your take on the crisis that we're seeing at the moment. Completely, yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Poonam Flamarian. I work at CloudReach. My role is head of Talent Academy. Um, and Talent Academy is a uh, is a collaboration with AWS. We've been uh, running this program for 12 months. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it, the program is really about uh, creating new cloud talent with the mission to improve the diversity in our, in our sector. So that's that's my my role. Um, I head up the Talent Academy. So in terms of the talent crisis, I mean, it's really about, you know, a huge amount of demand and a real lack of supply, lack of investment in, in the skill um, um, and the, you know, the talent that we, we need. Um, so, you know, a lot of industry groups out there right now are saying that, you know, cloud skills are, you know, one of the top three digital skills. Um, that are, there's a huge amount of shortage for this in our industry right now. Awesome. And Chris, are you okay to uh, introduce yourself and your take on the uh, crisis? And if everyone, anyone's heard the podcast recently, uh, Chris has given his opinion, so hopefully he's not changed in a week. I was about to say, if anybody saw the podcast, they may not have turned up today. Um, no, no, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks, Darren. Um, yeah, no, I... Uh, obviously, echo those those thoughts. It's interesting. You you gave that um, the uh, the Apple and uh, that you know that developer community and the growth in cloud. Uh, was, uh, if you go back to twenty ten, I think the cloud global market was fifteen billion dollars uh, mass sized by twenty twenty. It was two hundred and thirty billion dollars, right? So, and, and I think it took a fair few people by surprise the exponential the exponential growth. And and for me, it's a it's you know it's a talent crisis. It's, it's also a competition crisis. Um, cause a lot of the old world hasn't disappeared, but the new world's been growing really quickly. And I think the digital industry is fighting internally to allure people into different areas of it. And then it's trying to get the balance of that, of what you need and when do you need it. Um, and then clearly we're competing, um, we're competing with every under, other industry is also digitizing at pace. Um, uh, so you've kind of had that, you know, it's kind of a, a perfect storm of, you know, we've been, if you look at it from just a cloud infrastructure perspective, we've had that talent crisis in kind of you know infrastructure cloud but then every other industry has been trying to lure people into their businesses whether it's vet or medical or uh uh, uh you know uh, drugs or or lifestyle or you name it everything else is digitizing so everybody wants them as well so it's uh it has kind of the, the, the perfect storm in a good way but certainly left yeah. us where we are, I think, where we are today, I think. yeah as you say um chris like cloud industry has been victim of its own success in a way. Um, it's a very small uh, pool of talent and, you know, we end up just pinching from each other. We're fishing from a very small pool, basically. And that's that's the real crisis. Yeah, and ultimately it means as well that um, projects are, are stalling. So we found that sort of 65% of AWS migrations are, are halted or slowed down just because of the lack of talent or the, the losing of talent within organisations as well. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, 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 that's a really good point. And I think uh, as I, you know, the, the, the process we've been going through working with, with AWS and CloudReach is quite interesting because we've actually been going through the hardest bit, which is getting into uh, uh, the cloud. Um, and lots of people are trying to, so in other words, you get that hump of, of resource that you need to do these big projects at first, you know, the first step is always the biggest and the hardest. So actually, um, uh, you know, when you're in normal operation in, in, in worlds, you tend to have like a, a, a skills overload at some point, but we're not in there, are we, right? There's, that, you know, 15 to 230, but that we're not stopping, right? It's not slowing down. And for us, the last 12 months has been a huge requirement on skills that we've partnered to get. Um, 
And I imagine if every company is going through, you know, many companies going through the same thing, you, you know, it's, it's again, it's magnified in terms of that, um, those first adoptions or those accelerated adoptions as well for certainly for our business. And before I um, ask the first question of everyone, uh, Chris, can you just um, uh, contextualize your role uh, as a, you know, sitting on the board of a company and how you see the talent crisis within cloud? very quickly because obviously you didn't give you a chance to introduce yourself yeah no sorry i, I, I you gave me the chance and i i didn't do it um so chris gabriel i'm the chief <laughs> strategy officer uh, for sapphire we are um the leading um uh, provider of what we call digital operating platform software um to mid-market to lower enterprise in the uk and us we're partnering with people like sap and service now um and we um you know, we see the talent crisis um a number of ways one is we provide uh, cloud services to our customers so we've cloudified those historical perpetual environments your, your erps your finance systems your your enterprise asset management system so we take our great skills and then we provide that back to our customers as a cloud service um and then clearly we're seeing talent crisis um both in terms of those core systems that software um and also being able to then deliver those back to uh, to our customers as, as as cloud services and everything in between there from data skills and process and automation skills you know so you know the bits that then join those dots so um we've got about 1250 customers um uh, worldwide um, and we'll just go through a, 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 a wide-scale adoption of, of and growth of aws as our strategic cloud platform for our customers which is going brilliantly well by the way uh, we've migrated 52 customers um in less than six months so significantly really positive um but it would be nice to be a bit less stressed over it and 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 feel you know feel that it was um you know but we've like i say we've done a great job and it's been fantastic but yeah so we we um we as a business see that kind of digital uh, skills uh challenge uh, across all of those areas for us and, and, and on the board i'll be honest it's it's our number one thing we keep on top of um uh, you know you know finances yeah cash flow and all those things but but talent flow is just as important as cash flow in the world that we live in today so we we absolutely have it as a, as a number one board priority to be proactive, uh, manage, and, and and make sure that we uh, we uh, we're ahead of the game in 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 as many of the things that we can do to keep keep ourselves moving forward at the growth that we want to see as a business. Awesome. So my first question, and we'll just um, Nicole, um, if I go to you, I hope you don't mind. Um, what what's the barriers historically been? Do you think within technology and how do you think companies need to start tackling them yeah i mean i think aws is unique and cloud computing is unique in terms of it's been a disruptive um, industry player and within with disruptive industries and technology we need to then also disrupt the recruitment process and the way that we're trying to find talent so i think gone are the days of trying to find cvs with 10 years of cloud computing experience i mean aws was founded in 2006 so 16 years maximum anyone could have actually with with hands-on experience right so I think at the moment it's trying to change the traditional route to uh, find that talent, which has been exhausted in terms of the, the pool of people that we're currently going out to um, and trying to find different ways of, of identifying uh, maybe some transferable skills and, and some different types of routes to uh, jobs um, that people might have uh, and then build their skills once they once they join an organization and culture uh, that learning um, on the job, so to speak. Um, and Poonam, what's your take on that as well around, you know, um, his, historical barriers within getting people into technology and how how organisations should be tackling them? Yeah, I mean, t I mean, 10 years ago, we were definitely, you know, a, a, there was a lot of focus around academic um, routes, for example, um, and Talent Academy is, is, is a good example of you know, removing some of those barriers for, you know, we don't look for specific academic um, degrees, specific skills, we look for motivation, we look for passion, demonstrable passion, and a real growth mindset. And that's what we, we assess, you know, um, I think the diversification of, you know, is, is really important. And for us, that means really looking at all the transferable skills, we know there's a huge amount of hunger demand out there in terms of 
talented people with a huge amount of potential that want to get into tech and but not everyone has had the opportunities to get the experience you know experiences are really is 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 the is the word that is you know one of the big barriers because every most tech jobs out there will be looking for experience um but it's a catch-22 how do you get the experience so you know um talent academy for example has been set up to to sort of find high potential folks that are really wanting to get into tech and we give them we bring that equity on the table in terms of we we upfront provide those that investment um and upskilling um and then mentorship in the, in in the in the role and, and it is it has to be that's the only way you cannot continue to sort of just buy your way out of this by just offering high salaries um, to existing talent pool, you need to grow that talent pool and build those skill sets. What about yourself, Chris, regarding those historical barriers and what Poonam just talked about around specifics of degrees and academia and uh, tackling those? How, what's Sapphire doing? Yeah, I, and I think it's really, I. Um, uh, many 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 years ago came through an apprenticeship route into my career um uh, uh, you know when, when i went to uh, uh college uh, to do that um you know i think university places were about 20 percent of the population right so in a way um it it was easier then because there wasn't that that traditional certainly in the uk obviously globally slightly different here but um i think since we we've seen that shift to um academic only being the you know kind of the only option um, in a way, I think we've we've as a country we've inhibited our own um, uh, aspiration and access to uh, to potential talent that we could have had. So I think we very much like the um, you know everybody else we um, uh, uh, you know looking for diversification both in terms of geography, both in terms of of, of skills, both in terms of current uh, 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 career. We do a lot of outreach you know in schools, and we see that hunger. Um, we do a lot of work with. Um, a couple of London academies um, and when we run you know we run automation um, training days so you know 17 year olds can learn how to do their own RPA bots they all say can we have a job please right um, and it's it's then creating a business that can accept that um, so we know that a lot of this is unlocking our own brains into um, what's not to love about having you know a few 17 year olds uh, join um, and start to start to invest in them and I I think we discussed on the podcast that I do think business outsourced that problem um, uh, to universities or uh, outsourced it um, uh, during the last 10 years as the cloud uh, exploded. So we, we, we kind of this inverse risk. So, so for us, it's about nurturing and investing in the people we have. And I think doing that is good for those people. Um, secondly, it shows the culture of the, the business, the mindset for people wanting to join um, the thing that we've tried to do is create a really good story. And obviously, um, uh, we obviously Amazon clearly have got a great story because everyone in the world knows who they are, right? But not everybody knows who we are. Um, so how do we stand out? How do we look different? How do we, you know, we have our own talent team internally. Um, what's the story we give them to go and attract people to come and work for uh, for Sapphire? So we very much focused on that, um, uh, you know, making sure that we don't lock ourselves out of potential uh, talent but also making sure that we identify and sell ourselves and bring in the right talent because the other th um, i know we'll get to this but the big the big risk is we all panic um and what you then end up with is the wrong talent and then that talent comes and doesn't stay and then you and, and actually that can be just as bad a cycle as as less talent um so it's it's you know it's that that very um uh, that, that that balance that we try and strike um as, as a business and but also recognizing Sometimes you can't do anything about it, right? So you've also also got to not not panic and 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 you know assume that everybody's going to stay forever because you don't want that either, um, and and trying to manage that in in in, in the way possible, uh, you know. And I think we've we've got a pretty good handle on it, but we we effectively, as I said before, we talk about it every month, right? We don't go, oh, let's review it in three months. This is a uh, a monthly Continue. discussion for us as a business. Yeah, yeah, and a really good, interesting point you um, as well there around. <clears throat> Amazon and, and and companies. What, what's interesting with that is obviously the, the that rate of innovation within AWS. How do we think, Nicole? I'll mm. come to to you as with the Amazon top on. How how important do you think that part those partnerships between companies and hyperscalers or cloud providers 
is in ensuring that once that talent's landed you or obtained them, they're in that right environment. You know, there's a cultural fit and there's a pers personal development fit and you're able to keep them or, or at least there's a partnership or, uh, between both parties. Yeah, I mean, I think the partnership between hyperscalers and organisations is critical, really. Um, you know, the companies will be where those resources will get the chance to grow and build their cloud computing skills, um, you know, hopefully using AWS technology. Um, and especially with CloudReach, so we talked a little bit about the Talent Academy. Um, AWS and CloudReach have a um, strategic collaboration agreement between the, both the parties, um, which is a three-year programme, and really good to see that, um, that those achievements are, are, are happening and growing and, and really excited about the rest of the SCA uh, with CloudReach. And some of, some of the key sort of KPIs around that is um, certification. So we typically uh, will we'll see if that growth and that um, uh, continued investment in skills is achieved through that um, certification sort of process. Um, and the other one as well is, as Poonam's mentioned, is the increase in, in personnel coming into the business. So we've seen at least four cohorts with the Talent Academy uh, and, and further growth uh, happening outside of that within CloudReach as well. So it's really critical. Um, one of the other programs that we currently run is something called Emerging Talent Community. So this is some of our um, diversity programs. I'll talk about those a bit later. Um, but by giving that talent of um, individuals that have gone through some of our diversity programs we then connect them to employees so whether that's through job fairs uh, job boards um, networking events so we're constantly trying to connect talent that's invested in AWS programs with organizations uh, so that they can continue with their long-term investment. I love that. Um, yeah. Poonam, that's nice, leads nicely on to, to yourself. Yeah, and, um, you know, we uh, worked really closely with AWS and, you know, even in the, during the recruiting element of, you know, the attraction piece for, for the Talent Academy. And, uh, and in our India cohort is a good example because everybody in the India cohort come, has done an, the AWS Restart program um, run by one of the local nonprofits. Um, and that's awesome because it, 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 it means meant that they already had a foundational level of cloud knowledge so that when they came in through the door with CloudReach, we can really focus on, you know, their training on the, on the need on the customer side and build on top of that foundation. Um, so, you know, um, it was the you know first time for us running a, running a cohort in India, and the uh, you know the AWS network really allowed us to tap into talents that we wouldn't have access to. So through their academy initiative, through their restart initiative, so that partnership is really important because it provides us those stepping stones so that we can focus on you know what we are good at and things that have been done and done in the past. You know we're reinventing the wheel because the, the, that you know network is already there for us to tap into. So that was really you know key for us. Um, and you know we, we continue to collaborate with AWS in terms of our curriculum, right? We yeah. We, we are training people very much around, okay, how do you add value on day one with, with our customers? Um, and the, you know, the, the AWS team has been a key part of designing that curriculum um, and making sure that it's whole, like, you know, well-rounded so that, you know, there is a lot of um, uh, element around soft skills and, and, and all, of those, all of those good things as well. And, and Chris, I think that we there's ta a Talent Academy graduate or a Talent Academy um, working on some of the Sapphire work or uh, someone's going to correct me now. And Poonam's going to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it'd be good to hear your, your opinion of having those partnerships. And it can't be a fight like Poonam's, Poonam's said. It can't be a fight for everyone. Everyone's got to work in collaboration to, to, to progress. Um, what, what's your take on that as well? Yeah, I, I think that's um, it's, a, it's a really um, important point. And, and if I look at it from from my perspective, and obviously I'm in, you know, what we call the channel, right? So so we're we're kind of in the in the supply chain. Um, is you know, how do I excite people to come and work for Safa? Well, because they get to work with CloudReach and AWS, right? And 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 um, for me, that's a they you know they want to work for our business for for other reasons. But I you know I want to unlock the opportunity for them to work with um uh, fantastic partners to um 
you know, get engaged in innovative projects, um, to not pigeonhole them. So get a little bit of flexibility in terms of, uh, of where they move to. And I think for us, you know, with having AWS as a part of the cloud reach and then, you know, said, you know, things like SAP, right? Well, hey, you know, I want to be, you know, some people are biased towards, you know, SAP. Well, guess what? For SAP in AWS, how exciting is that, right? So it's then about trying to, you know, it's SAP and it's AWS, oh, and it's automation as well, or it's data science, or it's, so it's trying to, um, uh, not mold our business around the people, but to make sure we really get what we need as a business and the the way that we can um, uh, align skills, either existing ones. And, and the other thing is not stop investing in in existing talent, right? Is okay. I think that that is also really important that we don't, um, as I said, panic in, in incoming and forget the, the really fantastic talent that we've got. So we've got our teams who've been here a while working with AWS and CloudReach. We've got some new folks as well. We built a new team as our program they're working with 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 yourselves and i think that you know the risk is i lose some because they think it's oh wow i want to go and do something bigger and brighter but again guess what that's that's not a bad thing either right so because you've you you demonstrate that we're also a a talent uh, engine that yeah. you know you can move on so i think you know i think i think partnership and unlocking people's exposure to to working with you know some of the world's biggest and brightest tech businesses is what a great advert for our business right come and work for us um, and you get to work with these people and and isn't that cool right um so I, and you know and likewise i think some of your people have really enjoyed working with us right yeah um, yeah absolutely so that's important as well right the other way around yeah. and i think what i love about about uh, you know your organization chris is is that the, the, the that you embrace that balanced teams are really important right so balance in terms of talent maturity levels so right you know so we you know have uh, I think I think there's you know reports out there. Um, I was reading a report the other day from McKinsey around you know success, successful IT organizations. You know, I successful teams. What what does that look like? You know, thirty percent at the expert level, fifty percent in the middle tier, and you know, and you know, sufficient amount of junior people so that they are skilling up. There's space for them. So when those people at the top are are ready to move to the next challenge. They are able to because there's people coming up through through and without that without those junior emerging talents those folks at the top you know they you know there's all those things going on around quiet quitting and all those you know yeah. around the great resignation that we saw earlier um this year so you know that's what happens when we we, we pigeonhole people and we don't allow them to develop and grow oh. and things like that so that that you know, growth from bot down from bottom upward is really, really important. And I was going to say, it's 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 also really exciting for for us um, uh, in 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 a more mature role um, to work with exciting young people as well, right? So um, I I was mentored when I was seventeen and the worst COBOL programmer in North Wales, I'd like to think, um, by someone who'd been uh, coding since they had punch cards. Um, uh, and we got on famously, and I think his insight, support, help, encouragement. I remember when when he once said, "You're going to be quite a good coder when you know in in a few years' time." I went home and told my mum and dad, "Oh my grief! You know, an amazing person who's been doing this since the 1950s, um, who invented some of this stuff, just said I was going to be a great coder, right?" For me as a a youngster, that was great. And likewise, I think for us, so we we have a, a number of mentoring programs. We have a, a, a a really extensive female mentoring program around our business around the world because we just wanted to to identify some cohorts where we thought we could encourage and really accelerate talent and this has been brilliant because we've had younger folks more mature folks some some more mature folks who are quite inexperienced working with some younger folks who are more experienced because of the the, the entrance they had to the industry so i think also it's let's not forget we can mash things up a little bit um that it's not about age it's experience it's it's you know there's a number of different aspects to talent that um, can it make everybody really engaged and and yeah. and, um, and excited about you know the industry that we work in? It's yeah, it's the broader perspective, it's the transferable skills that people bring. Um, and I always love telling the story that you know one of the one of the folks who's working in your team uh, was a gin distiller before he joined CloudReach. So that was what he was doing. You know that was his main job, and he decided to pick up the cloud. And because there are all these resources available, and I think AWS is a great example of so much free resources available to people that a lot of self starters can pick it up and start learning, start getting the certifications. And he had all the certifications in the world by the time we met him and no, no experience so he was really 
struggling to get a foot in the door um, uh, to, to get experience in cloud, um, but he's phenomenal, right? He's doing so well um, in, in the team at Sapphire. And, you know, who would have thought, thought it, right? You know, we've got so many good stories like that, you know, people that, that were in very different roles you know, whether it's... Uh... We have nothing against gender stills at Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think you touched on a, a point, and it's my second from last question, and uh, before I ask these next two, I encourage anyone to drop any questions in the chat. We'll start to pick them up at the, at the end if there are any. Um, it can be as broad as you like. The panellists will see them. Um, but my second from last question is uh, both... Poonam and Chris have touched on it already, is the manner in which people getting into tech and the tech sector has always had quite a traditional route, a fairly traditional route. What are some examples, and I'll start with yourself, Nicole, around how this has changed or changing to diversify those routes and those people we're seeing in tech, you know, COVID and um, furlough within the UK, at least, and, and people, ex-forces and ex-military and those kinds of things, and, and trying to find different channels and routes to obtain that talent. Yeah, I mean, AWS has been intentional about how we try and diversify that um, pool of talent as well, because, um, you know, we're always thinking about the long term um, and how we can make sure that we're, we're seeing that change, seeing that, that adoption. And um, we've got lots of programs So we, we start from, um, from school children. So Chris talked about going into schools and AWS has a program called Get IT, which is where we go in and talk to um, students in year eight um, and encourage, uh, try and encourage girls. So we like to see teams of at least 50% girls, but girls to get into um, technology and see the fun side of it. So create a competition. We help them to build an app. They get a coach and an ambassador that comes into the school to support them along that journey. And then they go through sort of a bit of a competition and judge at the end of it. And, um, you know, just that program really helps to steer children's minds at that critical point where they have to then choose which subjects they want to be studying. Um, so that's where we sort of got into with that. If we go on slightly further, we've got a AWS Educate, which is where um, we're providing access to cloud fundamental digital training through our skill builder platform uh, for anyone 13 years up, uh, which has made us consciously try and take out tech jargon uh, and make it accessible to more people across, across the world and, and, and different ages. Uh, and then we've got Academy, which is where we're going into sort of 10,000 universities and colleges across the world and helping to embed AWS programs into that. Uh, and the one that you just sort of touched on as well is AWS Restart. Um, so this is where we um, support unemployed or underemployed um, people in different roles and, and different backgrounds. So that might be women in tech, it might be military, it might be refugees. Um, so we have lots of different programs in different countries, um, depending on where um, the skills gap is, is, is predominant in that particular area. Um, and we had really uh, one case, um, sort of talking about furlough, we had a case in 2020 where uh, there was a girl, she'd had spent 20 years um, as a shift worker in a fast food um, fa uh, chain, um, got furloughed as a result of COVID and then started to look online about how she could transfer her skills and start working in technology. So she was sort of searching, uh, found the AWS Restart program, went through the 12 week uh, structured education, uh, which both has tech skills and um, soft skills. Um, she got a cloud practitioner certification, shared it on LinkedIn, a tech company found that and she's now a solutions engineer. So she's completely sort of re-transformed her, her life and um, obviously loves now the fact that she's not working shifts and, and sort of has a, a normal business day as well associated to it. So we've got lots of different um, stories and programs um, around where AWS is trying to uh, change that pool of talent. And as I said, then bring it into this emerging talent community where we then connect them to employees to further their career as well. I love it. I love stories like that. They, they're great. Um, I'll, we'll go to we'll, we'll change it up. We'll go to Chris first, if that's OK, and then and then and then Poonam and then we'll jump to the last question. Is that OK? Sorry, I'm changing the uh, the cycle. Yeah, that's great. I, I mean, uh, how can I, um, you know, for, for uh, how can I better that? Because I, I think for me, that's the I, I, we, we, we yes, there's a, there's a talent crisis, but I think there's that. Um, uh, that story, that that the tech industry and, and specifically cloud telling great stories about what we've done, what we can do, 
to attract, you know, to me, the, the, there's, there's no lack of people that can come and work in our industry. It's us signaling that we want them and and, and the, 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 the difference they're going to make to um, themselves, their families, more importantly, you know, the exciting projects and the exciting outcomes that we deliver to, to business is one of the, you know, as I said, we, we've really tried to focus on that, that story of what we do as a business, because you can be very, you know, I, I could be very bland and say we're an ERP, financial management, IT service man. Yeah. Well, it's not that. It's that if you live in the UK, um, once a week, you will likely do something that Sapphire's made happen. Well, how exciting is that? And then I take that to the next level um, and I talk about the work that, you know, if you, you know, I, I we work with a, 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 a transport companies and one of their senior execs told me a little story about the way they, they think about their business is they don't run buses, right? Because what they do is that they change people's lives because if their bus gets someone to a job interview um, on time and feeling like they've had a good journey and that person gets that job, then they've just changed that. Life. And if you think about it, I think we're really poor at telling stories in our industry. I know we do some amazing things, but we're quite poor at that. And, and I think you tell them internally, you tell them externally, you tell them to, you know, the, the, the eight-year-olds we had in learning how to code a robot and the, the project we gave them was my mum's got dementia um how do they help my mum live a better life right and i tell you what if you ask eight-year-olds to figure out ways of looking after a 70 year old um they'll come up with some of the coolest thing in the world and then it's trying to get that with them through school so that we get them on the other way out and 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 that 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 other critical aspect is we don't lock anybody out because they're of you know just in the wrong job at this time or they haven't got the skills that they historically should have had um and and i think for us as i said i i genuinely think we're in a blip. Um, I do think as, as an industry that we've got a great opportunity to, um, uh, to, to not be in, in, in the space we are, but I do think uh, as, as our business and um, we, we've really got to make sure that, as I said, this, this, this stays on the agenda. It's the most important thing um, uh, in, in our businesses. And for us, so we've got Jetstream Academy. We've got five stages for new, for, for ingesting, and attracting great new people all the way through to making sure that we've got that career path for uh, for um, for others. And then the final thing for me, I, it's a little tale because it just came to me because um, you forget these things. I was on uh, Paddington train station. It was only last month and I bumped into an old colleague of mine um, and I said, oh, how's your, you know, my daughter's in university. I said, how's your son getting on at uni? He went, he didn't enjoy it. So about nine months he went, dad, I'm, I'm not enjoying this. And he said, he's now working for Amazon. And I went, oh, well, 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 what's he doing? He went, well, the best thing is in the first 12 months, I don't know which program he's on, uh, Nicole, um, but he's doctored around different bits of the business. And he says, oh, he's in on-demand TV at the minute and he's loving it. He's the he's like, he can't be any more excited about the fact that he's working in one of the biggest media uh, businesses in the world, yeah. right? Because um, he's had that ability to drop around in different aspects of of, of your, um, your business as a whole. Um, and he might end up dropping into cloud because his dad's in infrastructure. And it may just be that he, he ends up in, in AWS instead of another bit. And I think going for us, that's what we're trying to do in our businesses, make sure we're, we're, we're constantly bringing in new things to get our people interested and excited. So their career, um, they want to stay, but also that then encourages is, is, is new folks in. So Jetstream for us is really important as a small uh, you know size business, but um, you know trying to imitate some of the fantastic things that... Mm that uh, Nicole talked about absolutely is is um, great. And and therefore, sorry, final thing, how many times do our talent teams get together? So we have loads of meetings with with, with AWS, loads and loads and loads with CloudReach, but when did our head of people and, and, and our talent academy meet with yours? And we, so I think that's maybe a takeout for today is we should maybe create more talent-based um, networks within this partner ecosystem. Um, uh, I'm sure it might already be there and we're not in it, but that would be quite an interesting uh, uh, outcome for me of, of how we can all help each other um, you know, be the number one industry that people want to come into. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our programmes are out there in the public domain. So having customers, partners, employees, anyone that wants to collaborate and find innovative ways of how we can then improve that tech, tech talent is, is critical. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, Poonam, same, same question around the sector that traditional route um I have to keep it short because we haven't got long um, okay. fit in one more one more question before we go to q a sure yeah I, I think i couldn't agree with chris more in terms of the storytelling sponsorship that role modeling just 
it's so important that we keep you know letting people know that there are opportunities in the industry um you know what it means to work in tech because you know it, it's it's not, doesn't mean just coding and there's you know a whole variety of careers um i think i, I guess the main point i want to make because I, I think nicole and chris touched on it on a lot of things is is role modeling is so important it's so important that we get our you know talent especially the new talent that's coming through that is more diverse and it, they, they continue to then you know help us build that sustainable talent pipeline so you know going out and showcasing that hey you know um here's some here's, here's a black professional who who's you know in a senior role in this organization it's, it's important that we showcase that externally um you know i was at a, an event at, um, led by the the mayor of London, which was about connecting young black men to employers and talking, having a discussion about, you know, tech and barriers in tech. And there was a lot of conversations around, you know, being the, the only black professional in the room and, you know, uh, not having the role models. And I think we need to, we need to make sure that we have those. We need to go out and find those role models and, and make sure that, you know, the, the culture of the organization is one that, you know, um, we showcase that it, it you know, we, 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 we want you to bring your authentic self to, to work. Um, so I think, yeah, absolutely culture and, you know, role modeling is a, is a, is a, is a key one for me. And the last question, um, which is, uh, we'll start with Nicole, uh, how, how do companies and the industry as a whole really start to future-proof that workforce? I mean, and the sector, I mean, you talked and you, uh, Nicole, you opened with some absolutely petrifying statistics of where the crisis, and it is a crisis, right? Um, we heard it, I heard it dubbed as a war, but a war means we're fighting and it, it, it can't be a fight because everyone needs the talent, right? It's 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 a it's a crisis. But how do organisations stem the flow and then future proof their workforce? Do you, do you see and Amazon see? Yeah, and I I love the way that Chris talked earlier about how talent is at the board level, and I think that's just really important. I think for organisations having an executive sponsor who can explain the mission the vision that they have and make it relevant for why they're migrating and why they're starting to, to invest in cloud skills is probably the number one thing. And the second thing I'd say as well is a lot of people don't know what skills they're lacking. Um, so we have something called a learning needs analysis where we can actually go out to the entire organization, run a report and then identify what those skills gaps might be and have a structured plan behind how to upskill as well. And, and finally, I'd say, give people the time to, you know, one of our leadership principles is called learn and be curious, you know, give people the time to, to learn in the way that they want to learn, whether that's digital training, classroom training, gamification, we run lots of game days and um, deep racer events, for example, but give people the chance to break something um, and see how they can fix it and make it work because digital disruptions here for the long time and there's going to be lots more innovation that we haven't even thought about yet. Um, and uh... Poonam, yourself on, on future proofing and what can we do collaboratively as a sector? I think, yeah, as I said, it has to be about, you know, long term investment, thinking about the longer term and not, you know, continuing to invest in, your, in the people that you have, but also, um, you know, investing in the new talent, the future talent. Um, uh, you know, I think totally agree with Nicole around sponsorship, you know, uh, you know, for example, in our organization at CloudReach, we've got, you know, exec level sponsorship or Talent Academy. Um, we know, and that makes such a huge difference yeah. um, uh, across the board because, you know, just, just for the, the cultural changes that are, that, you know, need to take place. And um, so, yeah. And yourself, Chris? Um, yeah, I, I think for me, um, it's about not um, blocking any pathway into us, into our industry. Um, you know, so wherever somebody is from, wh whatever their, um, uh, you know, obviously capability, you need people with the right capability, but if they show the right capability, determination and attitude, that we just make sure that we keep those pathways open so we don't continue. If we just recycle the talent that we've got around each other, 
um, then I think that's our biggest uh, uh, challenge. But I think, you know, to me, I've come off this really encouraged, right, that, that you know, we go into schools, AWS, your, your, your global reach into, into those schools. And I think we we secure our industry because it's the most exciting industry in the world to be in, but it just needs to make sure that um, whether you're thinking of becoming a vet or a teacher or a, or a, or, or a doctor or a, a, an engineer, that you think, actually, I want to do that, but I want to do it in 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 the tech industry and in the digital space and i think if we can get that right we'll have this short-term issue um but i think actually why, why would you not want to work in the tech industry we've just got to make sure that we we don't kind of sit back and 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 effectively um uh just get you know insulate you know by insulating ourselves but become too insular at the same time and yeah. i think as long as aws and, and cloud reaching ourselves are outreaching um i think i think we could you know we'll fix it um uh, we just need to um, make sure that we get ourselves over this hump um, in the short term um, and continue all the great stuff that I see. In the, I mean, I think it's, I'm on LinkedIn, right? My feed on LinkedIn is some of the great, great initiatives across any industry that you'll find about getting talent and training and investment and all career opportunities and all of those things, right? I mean, it's unbelievable. But how many people do we tell about that apart from ourselves? I think, you know, that will be for me how we fix, how we make sure we, we have that sustainable uh, talent flow in the future awesome um so we're gonna go to q a um it is open we've got one question uh please everyone chip in so uh do you see a difference in demand in specific areas so for example cloud native developers cloud infrastructure specialists consultants or professional services so i'm happy to take that one first if you like i mean we are seeing a a gap and a demand for all of those type of skills. But I think we're still definitely at the tip point of cloud services. And as such, there's a big focus at the moment on migrating services, particularly from on-premise still into the cloud. And um, so we're definitely seeing sort of demand for solution architects. So our solution architect associate certification is one of our most popular and professional services side of things. But I would um, love to see more demand. Um, and we're starting to see that more around developing uh, and starting to modernize applications as well in the cloud so I'm sure that that will probably overtake uh, the migrations at, at, at some point but at the moment yeah prob probably in the professional services and migrations uh, most skills I I'm happy to so to, to chip in from from my perspective and what I do from an advisory there's there is high demand for that high tech um so AI machine learning um data analytics uh data streaming there's that there, there there are huge demand for that and really small talent pools um and some of it a lot of the people in that are self-taught as well they, they've not been to university or they've just picked something up and fell into the role naturally and especially where and they're um, very diverse as well um, don't know if anyone else has got a spin on that question. I was going to say, just from my perspective, I, I was uh, as, as Nicole was, was was speaking. Obviously, we've been through uh, directly related to our, you know, we've been through the map process. I think that and that that you know uh, analysis, you know, that, that that capability to help someone understand why their you know what their cloud journey is going to be, to take them through the business analysis, the financial. You know, we we probably don't have enough cloud accountants, right? Just to take companies through the the. the <laughs> The, the the financial uh, side of cloud um basically in the world you don't want engineers doing that right because it's not so how many people do we have in our industry that can go and talk to a cfo and analyze so i think at that business analysis perspective um and that's probably probably we fix that one we know we're then gonna have an issue for you know all the other, all but, the yeah. other but I, for yeah. me that would be that would be the interesting one is try and lure business graduates, try and lure people who've done, you know, accounts, try and get them into this world to help us understand the business mm -hmm. metrics and dynamics um, yeah. would be, I think, one of great yeah. things for me to, to fix. Funnily enough, we just launched this year a, a course just for that. And it's I think it's a few days long and it's a, a cloud fundamentals for financial professionals. So oh, nice. starting to definitely see the demand for that. But I agree there's not enough people that are actually in those roles at the moment. What about yourself, Poonam? Is it the generalization of cloud talent? And then you see that demand higher up the, the technology stack and type of requirement? Um, yeah, I definitely think we need lots more, you know, builders. I remember earlier in uh, CloudReach, earlier this this year, we had 
hundreds of requisitions open for engineers, right? So like migration, um, some of the bread and butter of what we do, right? And then um, there, there is a huge, huge amount of demand, but I think, you know, a lot of people that come through the Talent Academy, for example, some of them have been business analysts elsewhere and they, or they come with a real interest in data. Um, and I would say to them, you know, it's great to learn this, like in, infrastructure is, it, it, you know, a lot of those data projects are also infrastructure projects. So it's yeah. great to learn these, these core skills and then build on top of that. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, and a, a lot of people want to do that. You know, they, they want to go down that path and, and then sort of specialize. Um, uh, they they want to have that credibility of that, that broader foundation. Um, of some of the, you know, uh, the core skills before they go down the more specialist route. Okay. Awesome. Um, so uh, we're a little bit over time. So that concludes the webinar for, for today. Um, everyone's happy um, to, sh to, to connect on LinkedIn. So if you'd like to connect to any of the panelists or myself, please just reach out and connect. Um, it's always good to keep in touch with everyone. Um, and, and, and thank you for, for joining. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you.